This is Robin Gregory with another programme in my series, A Tenor Sang. When I invited you to let me have names of any singers you'd specially like to hear, there was a sizeable postbag for today's artist. Before I reveal his name, see if you can recognise his performance of the opening aria from Verdi's Aida, in which Radamis hopes that he will be given command of the Egyptian army and thinks of his beloved Aida. Se quel guerriero fassi, se il mio sogno si avverasse. Un esercito di prodi da me guidato.
Leste Aida with the Philharmonia Orchestra. As an extra clue to the singer's identity, let's hear him again in very different mood. Near Banbridge town in the county down one morning last July Down the boring green came a sweet Colleen and she smiled as she passed me by She looked so neat from her two bare feet to the crown of her nut brown hair Such a winsome elf I was ashamed of myself for to see that I was really there from Bantry Bay up to Derry Cay and from Galway to Dublin town. No maid I seen like the brown called Jean that I met in the county down. As she onward sped, sure I scratched me head and I looked at the feeling rare. And I said, said I to a passerby who's a maid with the nut brown hair. He looked at me and he said, said he, that's a gem in Ireland's crown. Young Rosie McCann from the banks of the band, she's a star of the county down. From Bantry Bay up to Derry Cay and from Galway to Dublin town. No maid I've seen like the brown Colleen that I met in the county down. At the harvest fair, she'll be surely there, so I'll dress in my Sunday clothes. With my shoes shone bright and my hat cocked right for a smile from the nut brown rose. No pipe I'll smoke and no horse I'll yoke till my plough is a rust coloured brown. Till the smiling bride by my own fireside is a star of the county down. From Bantry Bay up to Derry Cay and from Galway to Dublin town. No homemade I've seen like the brown Colleen that I met in the county down. Yes, that was Belfast's own James Johnston. The Italian performance of Aida was hardly a fair question, for it was his one recording in Italian, and it wasn't issued at the time, perhaps because of some strange balancing in the climaxes. Now we have it on a really outstanding CD compilation. Among many letters from you about Johnston was one from Leslie Gilmore, a Belfast journalist working in London. He'd become fascinated with the story of a man from his own city who'd sung with Maria Callas, Joan Sutherland, and Victoria de Los Angeles. I was able to offer him encouragement and to suggest a few names he might approach. And now we have Leslie Gilmore's excellent book about Johnston, called At Last a Great Tenor, and a thoroughly researched CD from Testament for which Leslie wrote the insert. James Johnston was born in August 1903 in Belfast, the third of seven children. His father owned a butcher's shop. From the age of 14, Jimmy began to win singing competitions, always as a baritone. But in 1924, he was shocked not to win, and even more amazed when the adjudicator said he was really a tenor. The following day, a member of the previous night's audience walked into the butcher's shop and offered to finance singing lessons in Italy. Unfortunately, his father would not hear of it, and as a result, the Johnston operatic career was set back at least 15 years. But he went on singing, becoming much in demand for performances of Messiah. After one of these, he was invited into a production of Merry England. It's astonishing to reflect that when he trod the boards in this Edward German operetta, he was making his first operatic style appearance, and he was already 37 years of age. Oh. 
Starring Johnston's appearance in Merry England, he was offered the role of Faust in Dublin. Thinking it was beyond him, and remember, he'd never yet been on stage in a real opera, and yet not wanting to close the door completely, he replied to the effect that he'd have said yes if the invitation had been to play the Duke in Rigoletto. To his horror, the response was, OK, Rigoletto it is. And so, six weeks later, and well into his 38th year, James Johnston made his operatic debut. Once started, though, there was no stopping him. A few months later, Dublin did see him in Faust, followed by Traviata, Trovatore, Don Giovanni. And in November 1944, now aged 41, he gave his first Don Jose in Carmen.
flower song from Carmen. News of his success brought Tyrone Guthrie, then boss of Sadler's Wells, to the Belfast butcher's shop. That meeting changed the singer's life. By October 1945, James Johnson had joined a Sadler's Wells tour to war-torn Berlin, where he sang the bartered bride under the distinguished batons of Walter Suskind and Reginald Goodall. From then on, London was his home. At Sadler's Wells, he was heard in Tosca, Butterfly, Bohème, Trovatore. No one suspected the young Cavaradossi or Pinkerton was well into his forties. Here he is in a favourite role from the period. On May the 21st, 1948, he made what for me is his best record. On one side, on with the motley from Pagliacci. On the other, Turidu's farewell to his mother from Cavalleria Rusticana. Both are magnificent performances by any standards. His voice is in great shape and he's totally immersed in the dramatic situation. Turidu knows he's about to be killed in a jealous duel and he asks his mother to take care of Santuzza. Mother! Mother! The red wine burns him like fire! It burns, mother! Burns me like fire. Why did I drink it? Let me go. Do not keep me. But am I leave? farewell from Cavalleria Rusticana. His mother was Olwyn Price. 
After some great personal triumphs at Sadler's Wells, notably Simon Bocanegra and Hugh the Drover, Johnston's move to Covent Garden was sudden, to say the least. The phone rang while he was rehearsing Butterfly on January the 10th, 1949. Was he free to replace a tenor who'd fallen ill? When? Tomorrow. In what part? Alfredo in Traviata. Who with? Elizabeth Schwarzkopf. How much? Name your own price. Many textbooks say that his first Covent Garden role was in a new opera by Arthur Bliss and J.B. Priestley called The Olympians. But they forget that nail-biting night when he needed all his years of experience to see him through. At the garden, he sang much of the standard repertory, partnered by some of the world's great sopranos. He was involved with many broadcasts, the first performance in English of Vorjak's Rusalka, for instance. He made many fine 78s, not least a complete messiah with Malcolm Sargent, in which he had to record the taxing opening solos after he'd spent a freezing night sleeping in a railway waiting room. He even appeared in a pirate LP of the Glyndebourne production of Verdi's Macbeth, though not under his own name. He was, believe it or not, Horst Wilhelm. In 1958, at the age of 55, partly as a result of a dispute, partly because he wanted to quit while still at the top, Johnston retired. Astonishingly, he went back to Belfast and worked again in the butcher's shop. A wonderful human touch, I feel. Make a date to join me, Robin Gregory, and my producer, Roger Bowman, again next week, as we end this tribute to Ulster's James Johnston with Leon Cavallo's radiant morning song, Matinata. Golden.